Good evening and welcome to State of Business on Art Television. I am Tamiru Nimsat. Let's have a look at the headlines. Government MPs get past the electricity bill despite the objection from the opposition. Another trade agreement signed between Maldives and Sri Lanka. News in detail. The Sri Lanka electricity bill has been passed by a majority of 44 votes in the parliament. The bill aims to introduce essential reforms to the electricity sector and was the focal point of intense debate during the parliament sessions yesterday. Following the second reading of the bill, the opposition called for a division resulting in 59 votes against the 103 in favour, demonstrating a majority supporting the bill. The SJB, NPP and the SLPP dissidents voted against the bill and the TNA MPs were not at present in parliament during the vote. Amendments were made during the committee stage and the third reading passed without a vote. The argument from the government parliamentarians was that this bill is a crucial step towards modernising the country's electricity sector. They stressed that it addresses long-standing issues and sets the framework for future reforms that will ensure a more efficient and sustainable energy supply for the country. Opposition members stressed that there are concerns about certain provisions in the bill and these issues need to be addressed to ensure fair and equitable access to electricity for all citizens. The Sri Lanka Electricity Bill, which was initially presented to Parliament on April 25th, of 2024 has been the subject of much discussion in the country. The Maldives and Sri Lanka announced plans to enter into new treaties following a meeting between the Maldivian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Musa Samir, and Sri Lankan Prime Minister Dinesh Gunwardana at the Temple Trees in Colombo yesterday. During their discussions, both leaders explored ways to strengthen existing ties and open new avenues of collaboration, particularly in trade, investment, education, and culture. Minister Musa Zamir said that the proposed bilateral treaties and MOUs will be crucial in enhancing economic cooperation between the two nations. These include an investment protection treaty, a double tax avoidance agreement and measures to facilitate remittances by Sri Lankans working in the Maldives. Minister Zamir expressed gratitude for Sri Lanka's support in the education sector and emphasised the desire to increase educational opportunities for Maldivian students in Sri Lanka. He also highlighted the need to recruit Sri Lankan teachers and doctors, proposing a government-to-government -government agreement for this purpose. Prime Minister Dinesh Gunwardhan requested the Maldives government to ensure free passage for Sri Lankan fishermen. The ambassador of the Hellenic Republic to Sri Lanka, Ali Kikur Somitopolu, also met with Prime Minister Dinesh Gunwardhan at the Temple Trees yesterday. The discussions focused on enhancing bilateral relations, trade, investment promotion and the significant potential for increasing employment for Sri Lankan seafarers on Greek ships. During the meeting, Prime Minister Gunawardhana and Ambassador Kurso Mitopoulou exchanged insights on overcoming economic crisis, drawing on the experiences of both Greece and Sri Lanka. The Prime Minister's media division said that Greece, with its extensive maritime industry, presents a valuable opportunity for Sri Lankan seafarers. They said that the potential increase in employment on Greek ships could significantly benefit the Sri Lankan workforce. They also said that the Ambassador has agreed to engage with Greek shipping companies to consider increasing employment opportunities for Sri Lankan seafarers. Stay tuned, we will return after this short commercial break. Welcome back after the break. In a move to bolster the Sri Lankan startup ecosystem, Hema's group, in collaboration with Hatch, has announced the second iteration of the Hema's X Hatch Slingshot program. As Hema's group celebrates its 75th anniversary, the company expressed commitment to fostering innovation and contributing to the growth of the Sri Lankan economy at a press event held recently. Following the success of their first accelerator program, which supported 25 startups and accelerated 8, Slingshot 2.0 aims to support an additional 25 startups in various sectors. By setting a goal to support 75 startups, HEMAS aims to nurture these promising ventures, ensuring they become significant contributors to the nation's economic landscape. Chief Strategy and Growth Officer of HEMAS, Rizni Faisal, said that the phenomenal response to the first HEMAS X Hatch Slingshot program underscored the immense potential of Sri Lanka's startup ecosystem. He said that by providing targeted support to high growth startups in key sectors, the company aims to address critical challenges and unlocks new opportunities. CEO of Hatchworks, Miman Piri, said that it aims to strengthen the startup ecosystem by providing the necessary support and resources to help them move to the next phase of growth.
The Sri Lanka Tea Board commemorated the International Tea Day, showcasing its heritage, quality and global significance with a special event held in Colombo earlier this week. The celebration highlighted the enduring legacy of Ceylon tea and its vital role in global tea culture, showcasing a bright future rooted in a rich past. This year's celebration focused on the significant contributions of women in the tea sector, highlighting their vital roles across the supply chain from crop to cup. Tea farming provides employment opportunities and generates year-round income, particularly for smallholders and women in developing countries. The event also included tea tastings from different countries, allowing attendees to appreciate the diverse flavours and traditions of tea worldwide. Sri Lanka Tea Board Chairman Nirash Damil said that the International Tea Day is a celebration of the timeless tradition, unparalleled quality and enduring legacy of Ceylon tea. Speaking at the event, State Minister of Foreign Affairs Tarakabal Surya said that with the decrease in agricultural population of the country, the use of tech-enabled smart farming with the help of smallholders and women is the way forward. While tea export volumes have dropped below the 2022 levels in 2023 uh, to around 242 million kilos, earnings increased to 1.3 billion in the year 2023. 9 million out of the 30 million people employed in the global tea sectors are smallholder farmers in the developing countries who produce 60% of the world's tea. Small holdings today account for over 70% of the country's tea production. Further, women play a crucial role in the tea industry of Sri Lanka as the vast majority of tea pluckers and wage workers, both on plantations and small holdings, are female employees. However, currently tea harvesting is labor-intensive and involves tedious repetition actions. Further, along with the reducing agricultural population and the increasing labor cost, manual labor has become a major cost component in the tea industry. Therefore, the tea industry needs tech-enabled smartness in all aspects of its functioning. In addition, smart tea farming improves quality and production efficiency and also decreases the cost of production and adverse effects on the environment. Therefore, it is in the interest of the tea industry in Sri Lanka to focus on using technology and improve ways and means of reducing the direct involvement of manual labor and explore the effective use of technologies Stay tuned for stock update. Trading at Trump Stock Exchange ended on positive notes today. The old share price index gained 3.6 points to close at 12,314.38 and the SNPSL20 gained 4.73 points to close at 3,655.61. The turnover was 1.2 billion rupees and over 38 million shares were traded. Up next are Forex rates. That's all our news for today. For this and more, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. Take care and good night.